Rene Gimple was, was certainly one of the most prominent art dealers of his time um, with important galleries, particularly in uh, London and in Paris. He dealt with many important families, um, Rothschilds, Wildensteins, etc. Rene Gimple was active in the resistance in France. Um, his family was active in the resistance. I became involved in helping the Gimple family in recovering artworks that were seized um, from them by the Nazis during World War II. Ami, entends-tu le vol noir des corbeaux sur nos plaines? Ami, entends-tu les cris sourds du pays qu'on enchaîne? Oh, et partisans, ouvriers et paysans, c'est l'alarme. Ce soir, l'ennemi connaîtra le prix du sang et des larmes. Montez de la mine, descendez des collines, camarades. Sortez de la paille, les fusils, la mitraille, les grenades. Oh, et les tueurs à la balle et au couteau, tu évites. Oh, et saboteur, attention à ton fardeau, dynamite. C'est nous qui brisons les barreaux des prisons pour nos frères. La haine à nos tous, c'est la fin qui nous pousse la misère. Il y a des pays où les gens au creux des lits font des rêves. Ici, nous vois-tu, nous on marche et nous on tue, nous on crève. Ici, chacun sait ce qu'il veut, ce qu'il fait quand il passe. Ami, si tu tombes, un ami sort de l'ombre à ta place. Demain du sang noir séchera au grand soleil sur les routes. Sifflez, compagnons, dans la nuit, la liberté nous écoute. On one of the transatlantic voyages, he meets a young woman, Florence Javine, who is the youngest daughter and the youngest child of 13 children of uh, Sir Joel Javine, who is an art dealer from a Dutch family, the Javine or Dufens, who are a Dutch family who had come over in the 19th century, first to the east coast of England and then settled in London. Florence's most famous relative is Lord Joe Javine, who is commemorated in the Tate Britain by the Javine Sculpture Galleries, at the British Museum by the Elgin Marble Hall. Now Javine is, was probably the best known of the art dealers from the first half of the 20th century. This morning, I went to see Joe Devine whose success stems from his taste, his boldness, and his gift of organization. Joe Devine does business as he would wage war, tyrannically. He is an audacious buyer and an irresistible salesman. Apropos of the bombing, the newspapers urged Parisians to stick strips of paper on the shop windows to keep them from breaking. My old city was never so beautiful. Spontaneously, an art has sprung up, the art of paper strips. It looks as though there won't be any geometric designs left to invent. Some are wonderful. Sometimes, the ordinary shopkeeper shows more taste than the great goldsmith. An hour sufficed to create an art form. Alas, in one minute it can all be erased. At five o'clock this morning, the armistice was signed. The news got round Paris in no time, and everybody was telling you about it. No one was completely sure, however, but at eleven o'clock, at the moment hostilities ceased, the bells began to ring, the cannon to fire, the admiralty put on a multitude of flags. 
The Place de l'Opéra was like a whirlpool as people kept pouring in from all sides. It's a tango, I heard a youth say, and the description was apt. A great warring people enjoying themselves to their heart's content. I know that there were paintings that were sent during the war to a number of locations for potential safekeeping, including some that were sent to London. I know that Ernest uh, Gimple then uncovered a, a stash of paintings in London after the war. There's an article on the London Telegraph that shows him uh, carrying actually one painting that uh, we had identified that had been taken during the war. And forced sales. Uh, and forced sales means that when you were not allowed to do business, uh, you had to live. And to live, you had to sell whatever you had at any price uh, that would be acceptable. So in those circumstances, or the circumstances of duress, the circumstances of having to sell, of having to sell quickly, of not being able to obtain receipts because you didn't want to be found with a receipt for a sale if you were a Jewish family, if you were in the resistance. So the restitution issue has come to be associated with the another aspect of the Shoah, that is another aspect of suffering of this group of people. And I realized that only a tiny fraction of works that were purloined at best and are just stolen, seized at worst. Only a tiny fraction of those works of art of whatever nature will ever be recovered. It simply isn't possible now. And as we move through the generations, uh, this is probably, we are probably the last generation in which we will be able to gather sufficient evidence And I will keep up uh, looking for stolen art, not for the money, because it's not the money that's, that's the point. The point is uh, in the provenance of a, of a stolen painting or a, or a for sale. Uh, the whole point is to um, falsify the provenance and to make people disappear, like uh, the Germans did in concentration camps. They put numbers on people. And this was a way of, um, of cancelling their, their, their right to be a human being. Uh, and in a way, modifying a provenance and removing somebody's name in the provenance of a painting is doing the same thing. It's making that person disappear. Um, and so the reason why I'm interested in, in recovering paintings, it's more it's, I'm more interested in re-establishing uh, my grandfather's name uh, in the provenance of a number of paintings, if we can, uh, to make him exist as, a, as, as the famous um, art dealer he was.